Welcome back everybody. How's your night going? Hopefully you're doing good. Um, I got another box of Core 2021. I only managed to get a couple of them early, so I don't know how long it's going to be before I can open some more. But we're going to break in the second one here and uh, see what we get. The first one was pretty good. Got some really good stuff in it, uh, including a, a full uh, extended art uh, Garouk, which is pretty awesome. So we got some, and we got a Chandra in the first box too. Uh, I did not get a Teferi, which was strange because uh, you kind of thought that the Teferi would be a little bit easier to get considering there's so many variants of him. Uh, I think there's like, what, four of them that are that literally the only difference is the color and the background behind them or something. Uh, it's pretty, pretty lame from what I've seen, how many variants there is of that one card. Um, but... I also didn't get a Grim Tutor in the first box, but I got one in the first pre-release pack that I opened that you probably saw last night or the night before or something. So there's that. Uh, this is uh, these are the Japanese packs. The rare is up front. Um, yeah, I kind of like it. I like the English or the American-made packs a little better, or Belgium or wherever they're made because. Uh, it doesn't, it, it gives you a little more lead up to it. <laughs> but uh, also, I don't like the way the Japanese design pa or made packs uh, have a lot of excess in them. <laughs> They're very weird. But, anyways, let's uh, break in here and see what we get. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get a Teferi and uh, hopefully another Grim Tutor because that's probably my favorite card that's being printed in this set is the Grim Tutor. I've been looking forward to getting some of those ever since they were. Back in starter, back in the day, back in what, 98, 99, I think. All right, Thornwood Falls and Maze Mine Tome is our first rare. Uh, this one, this one's got some, some people think this is going to be really, really playable. And I don't know, we'll have to see. The Tomes have never really been super sought after. Even the original Jam Day Tome back in, uh, back in Revised when I started. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a lot of people didn't use that a lot because it was still kind of considered fairly expensive for the one card draw. Okay, so Freebooter, Tormod's Crypt. I'm really glad they reprinted that. Standard needs that right now. Now, Leafkin Avenger, he's a pretty cool little card. Kind of like two cards on one. And then we'll see if we got any of the alternates. We do. We've got the Chandra's Magma. We'll keep track of those. And the Foils and the Mythics, of course. All right. Let's see what we get in here. So let me know what you guys are thinking of the set so far. Oh, <laughs> nice. This is a rare I did not get in the first box, and now I got it in foil. It's a Necromentia. Nice. So a good old Necromentia foil. Um, foil rare. Second pack. Can't beat that. Uh, Ghostly Pilfer is our actual rare. I don't think I've seen this one yet. Uh, Ghostly Pilfer becomes untapped. You may pay two if you do draw a card. Whenever an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, draw a card. Discard a card. Ghostly Pulper can't be blocked this turn. He's a two-drop, two-one. There's a lot of text on this card. He might be fairly fun. We'll have to see. <laughs> hey, anything with a two-drop with a bunch of special abilities, I'll give a shot. You know? <laughs> Silver Smoke Ghoul. Chrome Replicator and Thrashing Bronodon. Another one that I'm glad they reprinted in, in the core set because uh, Standard kind of needs him right now. Um... There's a lot, of, uh, a lot of artifacts and enchantments wreaking havoc all over the place. Played a guy tonight on Arena that literally his entire deck was just enchantments. And he had, it was like annoying enchantments too. He had the, uh, he was around black and white and green. And he had the Ley Line of the Void. And he had, um, God, uh, oh, the, the, the Elspeth Conquers Death. And, and the black one, the black uh, saga. And, oh, Doom Foretold. Oh. Just annoying. Uh, Bloodfell Caves and Nyambi, the esteemed speaker. I guess this is supposed to be Teferi's kid. Uh, that's our next rare. I got one of those in the first box. Riddle Form, Quirion Dryad, and Epitaph Gollum. All right, and then check our commons for alternate borders. Nothing, none of the Planeswalker borders yet. But I'm sure there will be a few in here. Well, actually, we got the Magma. Totally forgot about that little guy up there. Don't worry about that little guy. Right. Our Goblin War Wizard token. And then for our first of the uh, Planeswalker border uh, basic lands. This is the Chandra border, which is nice. Um, a little disappointed that they, they did the same border that they did in the spell book. You know, the spell book's supposed to be a little different. But, yeah, you know, it is what it is. Still really gorgeous looking land. 
And then a Temple of Silence, of course, because, you know, you can't have too many temples in standard sets two months apart. Uh, Tal uh, Talarian Kraken, Sanctum of Shattered Heights, yes, the Shrines are back, and Basri Solidarity, or Uncommons, and no Planeswalker Borders. Okay. I mean, these boxes are spicy. I like the, I like the alternate... Uh, bordered lands and stuff like that. Yeah, they are good stuff. There's some good printings in here. We got a Windscar Craig and a Chandra's Pyroling for our second foil. But uh, they're just, they they definitely don't seem as spicy as the Theros or the, uh, definitely not the Ikoria boxes yet. Peer into Abyss is our next uh, rare. This one's, uh, this one's pretty interesting. We'll see what happens with this. The fact that it costs seven there's no way to uh, to knock that down on the card. A little rough, but it's a great ability if you can get it to. If you can get that thing to pop, it's probably gonna be pretty crazy. Uh, Fierce Empath, War in the Woods, and Indulging Patrician. This card I really like. I think this one's gonna see a lot of play. I'd be surprised if it doesn't see a lot of play, especially in the black and white uh, life gain, gain and drain decks that are uh, pretty popular right now. Yeah. Vampire decks. I'd be surprised if that one doesn't see a lot of play. Uh, could be an uncommon that might actually hit a buck. Jungle Hollow and our first mythic. It's the Elder Gargaroth, which is actually uh, worth a little bit of money. It's, uh, he seems to be worth something already. Uh, he is pretty cool. I mean, a 5-drop for a 6-6 six, six with Vigilance, Reach, and Trample is pretty good on its own. But then whenever he attacks or blocks, which he's got Vigilance, so he can do both. He can Every turn, you can pop out either a 3-3 three, three green token, uh you can gain three life or you can draw a card. So that's pretty awesome. That's your turn and your opponent's turn. Because <laughs> you can attack and block. That's a pretty awesome card. I think uh, I think he'll see some play. Waker of Waves, Archfiend's Vessel, and Soul Seer. And then we got our commons. And oh, there we go. A Liliana Steward for the next uh, Planeswalker border there. Alright. Move it right along. I do wish they'd uh, they'd have done with like they did with Jumpstart. Like every third pack has the chance for an, a, an additional rare. That would have been pretty cool. Uh, Scorching Dragonfire foil. That's nice. Uh oh, I see something spicy in here. Do you see it? Do you see it? You see the spiciness? It is Chandra. Nice. My favorite Planeswalker. Woo, I'm good with that. Uh, yeah, nice full border, full art, uh, or no border, full art Chandra. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she's she's awesome. A uh, little bit pricey. I wish she'd have been four, not five. But as usual, Chandra is worth her weight in gold. Uh, her minus nine is pretty crazy. Search your library and gra or graveyard and library for any number of red instant and or sorcery cards. Exile them, then shuffle your library. You may cast them this turn. Add six red mana to your mana pool. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to end the game there. <laughs> her ultimate is pretty ultimate. Um, another thing I don't like is that they don't add a second rare when they do the full arts, which, uh, a lot of the Ikoria packs, when you got the full art, you still got a regular rare in there. So, not quite as spicy as the Ikoria boxes, but still a good set, good boxes, good reprints. Um, and then we got a Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest. This is one of the, uh, shrines you're probably going to see used a little bit more. And then Teferi's Tutelage with the Teferi, uh, Planeswalker border there. And then our Alpine Houndmaster. This guy's probably going to see a lot of play. Uh, he's pretty awesome. He brings in a dog or two of his own, and uh, <laughs> and then you can uh, you can uh, put them into your hand, then cast them the next turn, and then whenever he attacks, it gets plus X plus zero until end of turn, where X is the number of other attacking creatures. So you can use him to tutor up a couple of cards to cast, a couple of creatures to cast, and then attack with them all and pump them up. So. Or two drop, that's pretty impressive. I think he's uh, I think he's probably gonna be worth a, at least a quarter. I mean, at least, right? <laughs> uh oh, what have I done here? Put a land on top of the tokens. My piles are getting messed up. Blossoming Sands and Nine Lives. I've gotten a lot of this card already. <laughs> There's a lot of speculation on this one. We'll see what happens, but I don't like it. I'm not gonna stack it. Um, you've got to be running a lot of enchantments because if somebody hit you with that, uh, Oh, target opponent sacrifices an enchantment card. You lose the game if this is in play. You have to sacrifice that thing. That doesn't 
the hex proof doesn't prevent that. Uh, miscast. Speaking of miscast, I do that all the time. Bolt Hound and Vern Wingmare. And then anything. Nope, no alternates. There we go. And next pack. Moving on. Blossoming Sands. Roddick Hurt Heart of Killed. I tried to say Kurt of Held, but that didn't work. Heart of Killed. It's <laughs> a good card. Uh, older reprint, I believe. Um, as long as it's your turn, he, uh, Rada's got First Strike. She does. Uh, you may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may play land cards from the top of your library. Pretty cool. So you don't have to worry about needing a card and accidentally getting a land, you know? <laughs> so that uh, pretty much guarantees you're going to get lands most of return because you'll be able to play them from the top of your library. So if you haven't played a land card that turn, pop it right into play. And then she gets, uh, for six, she gets uh, plus X, plus X till end of turn where X is the number of lands you control. So three drop, three, three with a lot of extra bonuses. I think uh, Gruul's going to like that one. Uh, Malefic Saith, uh, Liliana's Devotee, and Enthralling Hold are uncommons in that pack. And, oh, there we go. Uh, Teferi's Protege for another Planeswalker border. Those are really cool looking cards. I do like them. And I like the fact that they did one for each Planeswalker so they're different colors. It's not the same alternate art in every single one. That's pretty neat. All right, Scour Barons and a foil. Henri Dilifisor. Dilifisor? What's a Dilifisor? Uh, yeah, I'm not even going to elaborate on that. That could go bad. Uh, <laughs> Subira. Tolzidi Caravaner. Got that in the last box I opened. Um... I don't know. She looks pretty cool. Uh, three drop, two, three with haste. And for one colorless, you can do this infinitely time, infinitely times, infinite times. Um, another target creature with power two or less can't be blocked this turn. I guess not infinite because you need mana for that. Of course, there is infinite mana combos. And then uh, for one red and one colorless and tapper, discard your hand until end of turn. Whenever a creature you control with power two or less deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Pretty neat. So you might see some play in some of the little mono red aggro decks. Griffinary, Sanctum of Stone Fangs, another one of the the better uh, shrines, and then uh, Obsessive Stitcher. Obsessive Stitcher. There's probably going to be some uh, some pretty cool combos with that one. I have a feeling it's a pretty weak card overall, but the combo of being able to bring a card from the a creature from the graveyard back back to the battlefield, and uh, that just anytime you can do that with a card, you can bring a creature right onto the battlefield. For a, for a fast effect, uh, obviously it creates some infinite combos because if you got two of her out and you got a way of getting the mana each time, you can go pretty uh, pretty infinite with it. Saltwater Cliffs and Demonic Embrace. Uh, I saw the black and the rare and I got excited hoping it was a, or I saw the black and was hoping it was a Grim Tutor. Uh, not a bad card though. Unsubstantiate. Burl Fist Oak and Tavern Swindler are uncommons. And no Planeswalker Borders. All right, last pack of stack number one. Wow, I am really slow. It's 13 minutes in the video. I'm still on stack one. Whew. Swampy. Nice. And then Garouk's Harbinger. Good card. Um, I got to foil one of these in the pre-release pre kit I opened. <laughs> the first one. Uh, good card. It's, uh, yeah, lot, way too much text. We're running low on time here. Falconer Adept, Seed Striker, and Cultivate. Cultivate a great uncommon. Uh... Search your library for up to two basic land cards, reveal those cards, and put one on the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand. And I believe that doesn't count towards your uh, one land per turn, so you actually get a second land on that turn. So that's an awesome card. Uh, that one's going to see a lot of play. Pretty much if you're running green, you're probably going to be running some cultivates in there. All right. Two stacks to go. Huh? I keep trying to open them like they're, like they're American packs. All right. And Island. And Temple of Malade, Heartfire Immolator, Sanctum of Tranquilite, and Volcanic Geyser. And then we'll scour through for any oh, any of the Planeswalker borders, and there's none. All right, let's start ripping through these things a little bit faster here. Night Token, Bloodfell Caves, and See the Truth. Didn't I already get one of those? Uh, got a lot of these already. Nope, no, I guess not. Okay. Everything I've opened, I've gotten one of these. I think I opened uh, the box. The first box had one of these, and then the, I think the pre-release kit had one of those, too. Um, all right, Reign of Revelation. 
Experimental Overload. That one's a fun card. And uh, Warden of the Woods. Experimental Overload is going to be on that uh, red-blue uh, instant sorcery deck. Um, I think that one's going to be probably find its home in there pretty quickly. Looks like a fun card. Treasure Token. Basic Island. Chunter's Incinerator. This one's uh, this one's got some hype behind it. Got a little bit of value on it. It is a pretty cool card. Uh, I got to say, I think it's going to see some play. Unleash Fury. Bad deal. That is a bad deal. That's a terrible card. Don't play that card. Uh, Just Guy Elder. <laughs> and at least one person watching this video is like, dude, that card's awesome. What the hell are you talking about? You don't know what you're doing. I'm uh, thumbs down. I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, Jungle Hollow. Uh, foil Prismite and Feline Sovereign. One of the kitties. Oh, this is the Kitty Lord. Other cats you control have plus one, plus one, and have protection from dogs. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Whenever one or more cats you control, deal combat damage to a player, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls. That's pretty good. Three drop, uh, two, three. Kitty Lord. I like cats. Except for one of mine is making noise when I'm trying to make a video. Uh, Canopy Stalker, <laughs> Garuk's Uprising, and Shipwrecked Dowser. All right, and oh, there's a Garuk's Gore Horn. The lamest looking card in the entire set. Uh, I mean, it's got the cool border, but they literally put nothing. Not even flavor text. You, you couldn't even take five seconds to come up with some flavor text, Watsy. Come on. You guys are getting lazy over there. Must be nice to have such a cushy job. Sit around and play magic all day and think of impossible to pronounce names for cards just to, just to mess with the YouTubers and uh, and not even come up with flavor text. Come on. Thieves Guild Enforcer. A one drop, one one. Flash. Whenever Thieves Guild Enforcer or another rogue enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills two cards. As long as the opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, Thieves Guild Enforcer gets plus two, plus one, and has death touch. So, I mean, they already got eight cards in their graveyard. This thing comes in as a 3-2 death touch with flash for one black. That's pretty good rare, I gotta admit. Uh, Carrying Grub, Kinetic Augur, and then a Chandra's Pyroling with the, uh, the alternate uh, border there. Planeswalker border, and nothing else. Okay, moving on. We're about halfway through the box now. Let me know in the comments what you guys are thinking. If you like this set, if you're having fun with it so far. Oh, ho, 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 ho. and we hit a box topper. Look at that. We got two of them. Ah, I'm knocking everything over. We got a non foil and a foil in the same box. Look at that. That is amazing. Woo! I wish I had a way to make thumbnails. That would be my thumbnail right there. <laughs> that would be pretty awesome. Fortunately, I can't edit videos yet. I have no way of editing on my iPhone. That is amazing. Oh, <laughs> and it keeps getting better. We keep getting more. Another mythic. Two mythics in the same pack. One is a box topper. Full money, foil, Chandra, full art, planeswalker, and then a Bane Slayer Angel right underneath her pretty little butt. Look at that. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah, I can't even believe that. We're gonna we're gonna put those two little ladies right up there because they are so pretty. Uh, just only forget they're in there, because <laughs> I will. Wow, I can't believe that pack, man. Box topper, full art, genre, and a Bane Slayer Angel in the same pack. Crazy. Tide Skimmer, lower scale Kotal, and Meteorite. Oh, I, I misspoke in the first box. I was like, oh, Meteorite's gonna see a lot of play because I I actually misread it. I thought it was only three drop, but it's a five drop. If it was a three drop, this thing would probably be in most decks but five drop that's pretty pricey especially for only two damage and only one mana um i don't know i don't think that's gonna see a lot of play actually uh yeah if it was a three drop if it was two drop it'd be amazing literally everybody would put it in every deck there'd be four of them in every single deck but uh a three drop it would be playable oh nice pretty teferi border island there and a Foil Basri's Acolyte. And a Fable Passage. Wow, two awesome packs in a row. I love Fable Passage. I know the price is going to drop a lot because it got reprinted again so close together. But it's just an amazing card. I mean, it's it's, it's a fetch land with no drawbacks. Except unless you've got less than, less than four lands in play. But it counts itself, so there's always that. So, all right. Seasoned Hollow Blade, Pestilent Haze, and Selfless Savior. Nice. 
And I've got one of the, uh, I've got a red black sack deck with the mayhem devils and all that. And the, of course the cat oven trick in there. And uh, I put four, even though it's only two colors, I put four of the uh, uh, Evolving Wilds and four Fable Passages in there because they actually count as sacrificing. Oh man, we got more space already? Holy cow. So uh, in a game earlier today, I had, uh, I had two lands in play and I had the Mayhem Double in my hand and I had two Fable Passages were my only other lands. So I put them both out there and I was able to actually sack them both for the proper colors. I sacked the first one to get the Mayhem Double out there and then I sacked the second one and was able to do the damage. What? Oh, looks like, we, do we have two rares in this pack? What's going on here? Oh, nice. Wow, look at that pack. This box is amazing. Um, a Speaker of the Heavens, which is an amazing card, pops out four, four white angel creature tokens. You only need seven more left than you start with, and it's a one drop, one, one with Vigilance and Lifelink. Great card, and then a Containment Priest full art right behind it. Two rares in the same pack. That's weird, though. They're, they're not in the, you would think it would be, this one would have been first and then that one. That was weird. It was like backwards order. So that's pretty That's pretty amazing. Uh, that is a great pack. Wow. Speak of the Heaven and Containment. Oh, that's three amazing packs right in a row. Look at that. I don't even have a spot to put this. We're going to have to move the packs over a little bit. Uh, put them over there. There we go. That's that's a gorgeous looking Containment Priest. And Containment Priest is a great card for this this current standard. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's going to fit in well. Uh, you're going to see a lot of play. Skyway Sniper, Traitorous Greed, and Twin Blade Assassins. And there we go. Nothing else. So, wow. That was three just incredible packs in a row. Can we keep this momentum going? Please say yes, because that was amazing. Nice planes. And a Primal Might. Not bad. Not bad. Um, I do like the Primal Might basically a green fireball when you but it can do double damage because you can kill a creature and then attack for a bunch bunch of damage so i do like the problem i i think that's a great card i think it's gonna see a lot of play in green decks uh havoc jester this one should have been should have been a four drop if it was a four drop it would get i would put it in my uh my red black sack deck but the mayhem double is only three drop and this one's five for basically the five, the same thing when you sacrifice a permanent, it deals one damage to any target. It's cool that it's monocolor, but it's not worth two more mana. One more mana, it would be worth it. But two, not worth it. Um, I'm glad they put it in uncommon, not rare. But anyway, Wildwood Scourge and Vern Wingmare again. Vern. Hey, Vern. Oh, there's a Basri Acolyte with the uh, Planeswalker border. All right, we're getting down to stack two. I really got to speed it along. We're 23 minutes in. I'm still in stack two. Uh, forest and con Conspicuous Snoop. I love this guy. This guy's going to create so many infinite combos until he's banned. Probably two days after the set releases, just like poor old Luris was. But uh, yeah, infinite combos. I love them. If it's a crazy, meme goofy combo, I will make a deck around it. I love just crazy combos like that. Fungal Rebirth, Hellkite okay, Punisher, Battle Rattle Shaman, Battle Rattle, Battle Rattle Shaman, Shamalama Ding Dong, yeah, Battle Rattle Shamalama Ding Dong, say that ten times fast, say it once, I can't even say it once, alright, <laughs> two bags left in stack number two, but man, stack number two was insane, Whew, box toppers and full arts everywhere, and mythics, uh, Hooded Blight Fang, again, I saw black, got excited, and then was let down immediately. Light of Promise. That one uh, turns any creature into an, a Johnny's uh, a Johnny's Pride Mate. So that's pretty cool. Except I think it this one actually works better than a Johnny's Pride Mate because a Johnny's Pride Mate, if you gain like three life in one shot, he only gets one plus one plus one counter. But this one, whenever you gain life, put that many plus one plus one counters on this creature. So this is even better. But it is a little bit more expensive, and there's no feet attached to it. Uh, Gormand and Conclave Mentor. This guy again, man. These two cards. All right. Imagine this. These two cards and what is the? Uh, oh God, the green green card. Put a plus one plus one counter. Uh, every every upkeep double the amount of number of plus one plus one counters on that creature. 
yeah, I mean, wow. <laughs> uh, I've got a Simic counter deck, but I might have to build a uh, Selesnia counter deck here <laughs> because uh, Selesnia with those those couple cards just might have really ramped up. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. All right, Thornwood Falls, and nice another flow rare, a Bosley Bos yeah. Bosri's Lieutenant, full rare. This one's not bad. Um, he's a four drop, three, four, but he's got vigilance and protection from multicolor, like the Stone Cold Serpent. When he enters the battlefield, put a one, one counter on target creature you control, so you can put it on himself. And then whenever uh, Bosri's Lieutenant or another creature you control dies, if it had a plus one, plus one counter on it, create a two, two white creature token with vigilance, white knight creature token with vigilance. So pretty awesome card. Uh, so another good Good full rare. And then we got jo Joel Real Monvuli Recluse. All right, I tried it this time. I didn't try it the first time. I was I was scared. Uh, Rewind, <laughs> Face Fetters, Palladium Mire. And Palladium Mire might see a lot of play. Palladium Mire will see more play than the artifact that I was talking about earlier because uh, Palladium Mire actually does give you two mana and it's only three drop. And it's got feet on it. Oh, I forgot. Pull tab. <laughs> I'm like, how come this pack's not opening? Pull tab. Japanese packs. All right. And Bloodfell Caves and another Temple of Mystery. And we got Falconer Adept, Teferi's Tutelage, and Basri Solidarity with another Planeswalker Border for Uncommons. And do we have any Planeswalker Borders in here? Nope. Looks like we only you're only going to get one to a pack, so... If you get one in the uncommon slot, I haven't seen any in the uncommon slot and then seen one in the common slot also, but it's only the second box. We'll see. It may be possible. Uh, a full foil basic land here, uh, Thermal Falls. And then a non-foil Necromancia. That was our first pack. Was the We had the foil Necromancia. And we got the non-foil. This card, this card could be pretty good. It could see a lot of play. We'll see. Bolt Hound, Waker Waves, Dire Fleet, Warmonger. He looks pretty fun. Gotta admit. And, oh, that's not a... Planeswalker border, it's a land. Radiant Fountain. All right. All right, we're in the last stack. This one's going to go over half an hour because I'm slow. I know. Oh, and a Garuk Unleashed. Nice mythic pull there. So that's our th third standard mythic. Uh, but we've got five mythics total because we've got the two different Chandras, the foil and the non-foil, both full art. So we've gotten five mythics in this box already. That's pretty amazing. One's a box stopper. Invigorating Surge. Cultivate. Another Cultivate. Nice. Two in one box. Twin Blade Assassins. And yeah, uh, it's very rare that you get... I, I don't. I didn't expect too many boxes to have two Cultivates in them because, you know, Watsy knows which uncommons are going to be more sought after. And they kind of nerfed those on the card sheets. You know what happens. I mean... Uh, oh, a Chromatic Orary. Nice. I didn't get this in the first box. Another Mythic right in a row. Man. It's like whenever we get one good pack, we get a couple good packs. That's awesome. Uh, then a Riddle Form, Sanctum of Shattered Heights, and Selfless Savior. So, yeah, I mean, they definitely, you know, it, it's you're probably not going to get too many Cultivates in one box. Uh, I don't, you know, you'll probably get play sets of some of the really junky uncommons, but I doubt anybody's going to get a play set of Cultivates in a single box. Yeah, I'm sure they nerfed them. Uh, Foil Grasp of Darkness, pretty good card. It's a uh, removal. It's a, uh, what was the, uh, oh, the one from, I think, Theros, the target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. This is one better. It's one better. And then Shacklegeist. Shacklegeist can block only creatures with flying. He's a two for a two, two flyer. You can tap two untapped spirits you control, tap target creature you don't control. So he's going to be an annoying little guy to face. <laughs> He'll probably get a lot of play in those uh, blue decks. Eliminate, good card. Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest. And then an another Indulging Patrician. Great card. Yeah, that one's going to see a lot of play. All right. We're getting down there. What do we got left? Like seven packs? Yep, seven packs left. All right. Almost there. I know you guys are like, dude, hurry up. You, you just shut up and open. Double of Triumph, <laughs> Miscast, Soul Seer, Tempered Veteran, and nothing in the back. I just like the game. I like the cards. I like talking about them. This is fun. I enjoy opening boxes. I don't want to rush through it. I can't afford to rush through it. I can't afford to buy a million boxes. To Fairy's Ageless Insight with the alternate border, the, the Planeswalker border. 
If you would draw a card, except the first one you draw in each of your draw steps, draw two cards instead. Not too bad. I can see the cycling decks really taking advantage of this. <laughs> the cycling decks will go crazy with this card in it. So there, we've got another another alternate border there. Angelic Ascension. That one's going to be probably, probably used a little bit, especially in Sealed. This is going to be pretty popular. Um, Furious Rise and Watcher of the Spheres. That, yeah. Like Azorius Flyers needed this card. It's already too good. Doesn't need to ramp up with this thing. This thing's going to make Azorius Flyers just ridiculous. We're going to have to start stacking main, main board stuff to takes out blue and white flyers. Kind of unbelievable. All right. They don't need to help some of these decks. All right. And Tolarian Kraken Foil. And then an Idol of Endurance. Nice. Um... It's a one white, two colorless artifact. When Idol of Endurance enters the battlefield, exile all creature cards with converter mana cost three or less uh, from your graveyard until Idol of Endurance leaves the battlefield. And then for one white, one colorless, and tap until end of turn, you may cast a creature spell from among the cards exiled with Idol of Endurance without paying its mana cost. Around the right build, that's probably going to be a pretty good card, but I don't see it getting a lot of play. Sanctum of Calm Waters. Which is Cauldron and even Gagglemaster. <laughs> that one cracks me up every single time. Such a goofy name. Let's call it the Gagglemaster. <laughs> I just love to see. I'd love to see the guy at Watsy that came up with that. Probably wasn't a girl. Had to have been a guy. That's definitely like high school locker room stuff. Um, <laughs> Dismal Backwater and Brash Taunter. Nice. Uh, this guy is pretty awesome. Um, this one's going to be, <laughs> this one's probably going to see some pretty broken stuff happening to it. I, he's very expensive. He's a five drop for a one, one, but he's indestructible. And whenever Brash Taunter is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target opponent. And then for two and one red and tap him, Brash Taunter fights another target creature. Uh, I mean, if he was a three drop, oh, this thing would see so much play. Five drop, obviously, you're probably going to build a deck around him, but it would be a pretty cool deck, I must say. Um, I've got an idea. I've got an idea with him. I think I might uh, I think I might try him. All right, and then uh, Trader's Greed. I do like this one. Uh, gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. So it's just your normal steal your opponent's creature, but you get this extra uh, line. Add two mana of any one color. So... You get to steal their creature. Technically, this knocks it down to a one red and one colorless. Uh, but you also get to filter to two different to whatever color you want mana. So, pretty cool card. I, I like that one. Um, I use. I might switch that out for the uh, uh, Tavern Swindle or Archfiend's Vessel. In my red black sack deck, obviously, I steal my opponent's creatures and then sack them because, you know, why well, sack my own creatures when I can sack my opponents and get bonuses out of it? So <laughs> I've got the uh, one that's one red and two colorless. Um, of course, I've got, a, I've got a play set of the one red that'll steal anything under three mana cost. Uh, but I've got the one red and two colorless ones, but I might put these in there instead because technically this is one cheaper. I just got to cast it before I cast something else, but that's not a problem. I can use those other two mana to uh, sacrifice their creature to, to my lamp pad. So, you know, <laughs> that'll be fun. They'll enjoy that. They really will. I promise. <laughs> yeah, people get so mad when I do that. People tend to scoop when you steal their creature and then sack it for your benefit. <laughs> That's weird. I don't know why they get so offended by that. Sanctum of All. Got that in the first box. I'm gonna, I have no opinion on that one yet at all. We'll have to see what happens. These five color cards are always, always niche market kind of cards. Fierce Empath, Thrashing Bronodon, and Epitaph Gollum. Alright, we're getting down here. We only got two packs left. Two more packs, and then we're out. But man, this has been an epic box so far. We got six Mythics. Six, and two Foil Rares. Both of them are good. This weird token is amazing. I love this thing. Great artwork on that. Who did that? Does it even say? Uh... Oh, God, it's so small. What does that say? Oh, focus, focus. Is that Lie? Is his name Lie? His, her, Lie. Yeah, I can't read that. Wow, it's too late. Um, <laughs> Basri Solidarity Foil and a Pack Leader. The good old puppy dog. 
he's the goodest boy. That's why I guess what that's what everybody's calling him. Uh, yep, little dog lord. I still think Hound sounded much cooler. Silver Smoke Ghoul, Tormod's Crypt again, nice. And Volcanic Geyser again, okay. Got a few of those in that box. And, oh, we got uh, Liliana Stewart in the back. There we go. Last pack, and then we'll take a quick little uh, glance at what all we pulled. This has been a really good box, much better than the first box I opened. Uh, oh, Mountain right at the end, nice. And Gadrock the Crown Scourge. Uh, didn't we get him already in this box, or was that in another box, or was that the pre-release? I don't know. I've opened so much stuff here in the past couple days, I'm forgetting what's what and where. Um, no, maybe not. That must have been one of the other things I opened. Okay. Anyways, Gadrock the Crown Scourge. Uh, good card. Uh, we'll see. Uh, hopefully they bring back more artifacts so this guy can become a real menace. Because uh, I would love to play three for a 5-4. I definitely would not mind that at all. Three for a 5-4 flyer. I'll do that all day long. So, <laughs> good card. All right, and then uh, Talarian Kraken, Sanctum of Stone Fangs, and another Houndmaster. He's a good card as well. I think he's going to see a lot of play. And anything in the back? Nope, nothing in the back. There we have it. All right, there's our box, man. Obviously, we, uh, we did pretty good on this one. We got, let's see... Uh, oh, that's a foil. That's supposed to be in the foil spot. Oops. I uh, put them in the wrong stack. All right, we got our Ageless Insight. I, want, I always want to see if we get all the lands or not. If we get one of each color. That that would be pretty cool. One, two, three. Oh, and I think we got a swamp, so I think we might have done it in this box. We did not achieve it in the other box. Ah, oh, there we go. So we got one of each. Nice. All right, and then uh, commons, uncommons. We'll take a quick count here. Oh, we got two of the mountains. All right, so we got uh, two of the mountains. So we did get one of each land plus an extra mountain. Uh, we got our rare Teferi's Ageless Insight, uh, Bajri's Solidarity, Chandra's Spiraling, Tutelage, we got the Steward, Acolyte, the Gorehorn, which is the plainest card in the entire set. The artwork doesn't even make up for it because the artwork's so dark. It's kind of like, eh, what's really going on there? I don't even know. And then uh, Protégé and Steward and Magma. So we got a, a good amount. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 of the, uh, of the Planeswalker border cards. We got some really good fall rares. We got two of them, as a matter of fact, which is awesome. We got the Lieutenant and what else do we get? Oh, we got the Scorching Dragonfire. It's a great common. We're going to get a full common. That's a good one. All right, so we got the Necromancia and the Bosri's Lieutenant, both uh, both really good cards, uh, both good rares that we got foiled there, so that wasn't bad. And then we got God, Mythics for Days. We got the Orary, we got the Garuk, we got the Bane Slayer, and we got the Guard. So all of these are like value Mythics too. We didn't get any of the bulk Mythics at all in this box. That's awesome. So all good value Mythics, and we technically got six because we got the two Shoners. One is foil, box topper. That is awesome. I didn't get a box topper in the first box, so I'm pretty pretty glad we got that. I really think there should be a box topper of some sort in every box. Uh, you know, I, I wish they'd put it in the pack on top like they did with the Ikoria, but I wish they'd glue it to the top of the box so it doesn't get stuck under the other packs and get ruined. That would be bad. And then we also got our full art containment priest as well, which is a great card. And then we got some really good rares in here, so... This was a really, really incredible box. I think. I think this is probably, probably going to go down as one of the one of the better boxes you're going to see of the Core Twenty One, uh, at least right now. Anyways, uh, we didn't get a Grim Tutor, so and that's going to be one that, like, a few years from now when we look back at this video, we'll be like, oh no, Grim Tutor, oh, it wasn't a good box. You know, <laughs> I have a feeling. Just call it a hunch. But anyways, I hope you guys liked the video. I know it's a super long one, 40 minutes here. I apologize about the how slow I am. I just really enjoy talking about the cards and opening the packs and just having fun with it. And it's a brand new set, so I'm just as excited as you guys probably are about looking at it. So anyways, uh, check out some of my older videos. There's some really good stuff in there. I got a bunch of other uh, openings uh, before the actual releases here. I managed to get my hands on quite a bit of product this time around um, before it's actually supposed to be released. So pretty happy about that so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and enjoyed these early looks at them and uh, check out a couple other videos while you're here i really appreciate your time and thank you so much we'll see you in the next one thanks bye